You may have heard about this facility. It is at the center of all the testing, major testing of the COVID-19 cases. We are taking you through all the five processes, all the five protocols they need to test the samples for them to identify which ones are positive and which ones are negative. We are taking you through the sciences of testing for COVID-19 cases. The first department is the sample receipt area. Here, all samples from across the country are received. They are taken through some protocols before they are worked on. When the COVID samples come in, they first stop at the security gate and we have a sample receipt form. They fill in the sample receipt form, the type of samples they're bringing, and somebody is there to receive it and endorse that the samples have indeed entered into the institute. Then they drive to the frontage of the ARL and take their, the ARL's the advanced research laboratories. And they then take their ice chests out. We disinfect the ice chest and then they give their form to another officer. And then one of the officers then checks the number of samples against the number of forms that they've brought. If they, they, they march, then of course we receive them and then they are allowed to go. We then take it to the laboratory. Samples may be um, differentiated into two, suspected and contacts. Suspected goes straight to the lab and then contacts wait in, in a queue. Um, if they bring the samples and the samples are not up to number or they don't tally with the forms what happens is that maybe they have more forms than samples so they would have to reconcile them and have to take out the sample the forms that do not have samples with with them if you're looking at sample receipt book at one point in time we received over six thousand samples in a day you know, so we can receive 6,000 samples in a day. Depending, when the contact tracing was at its peak, we were receiving between 6,000, 7,000 samples a day. Um, now that the contact tracing is, is almost over or it's over, we are receiving between 1,000 samples a, a, a day. So things have slowed down considerably. But, I mean, any amount, we are here 24-7. So um, samples come in at any time. There's always somebody to receive the samples and then either send it straight to the lab or send it to the cold room um, for later analyzing. The next phase will be at the virology department where the samples are taken through different processes of testing. Stage one of the process here is the data entry. Data entry personnel match sample IDs with the specific samples. So here we are in the virology lab. Okay, lab huge so machines here there. They receive samples. They sort the samples out. You see at the sample receipt point, you saw that they have brought samples. We need to sort all those samples out. So here in this lab, they sort out, they receive the samples over here. They sort them out. They give them lab IDs. And then they also do RNA extraction. We'll move to uh, Gifty to tell us more of what goes on in this lab. So let's go. She'll mention her name and introduce herself to us. Gifty, how are you doing? I'm fine, and you? I'm good. How, how's your day going? It's okay. Today is normal. Mm. There's no much pressure here today. It means that back in the days it used to be... Oh, yes, 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 yes. We were overwhelmed with the samples, but now it's better, yes. And since we have different groups working, we always keep it in charge. Yes. Yeah. I want you to tell our viewers in simple terms what goes on here at the lab in terms of the COVID-19 management. In here, in this lab, we receive samples from the clinic and from contact tracing. So when we get the samples, we make sure these samples have their case investigation forms. So each sample would have to be matched with a case investigation form. So since the sample comes in many, we try and sort them match each to each case investigation form. After that, we have lab IDs. We have our lab IDs. So we match each sample to a lab ID. 
when these samples are received matched with the lab IDs, we do what we call RNA extraction. We extract the virus from the sample. It's a viral RNA. So we extract it. We do that one here, and that's what my colleague is doing there. After the RNA extraction, we take it to the master mix room, and we take the we do a master mix for polymerase chain reaction. So we take the sample to the other room for polymerase chain reaction. That's the PCR. And this is where a sample would be determined as positive or negative. From the virology lab, the next processes of testing are at the polymerase chain reaction laboratory. Here we, we put in the patient sample in the assigned well. We have sheets like this where we indicate which sample is going into which well. And then after we run it, we analyze the results that we get from here and it tells us who has the infection and who does not have the infection. And then we report to the, whoever needs to go to the investigators. We um, run the RNA that we get from the clinical samples and this is where we are able to tell which samples are positive for COVID-19 and which ones are not. So what we basically do here is try to increase or amplify the number of viral RNA we have in the patient's sample. And then by that we can check whether the person has it or doesn't have it. So now I'm currently doing a run here. So what you need to have is a... Okay, I could use this one. You need a positive control like that and then a non-template control. Okay, so your run must include a positive control which must show a non-template control which is just like an internal control and then a negative control which must not show anything at all. So what the, non the internal control tells us is that the, um, a human RNA, a human sample was actually picked up. So if the um, internal control does not show, the test is not valid. Now that we know how testing is done, the next process is how information from the labs gets to the infected persons. This is managed by the data center at Noguchi. If your sample is positive or negative, after the results are verified, a member of this team calls the person designated on your form as the person who is supposed to receive that results, and they would ensure that they go through the appropriate procedures to inform you and the next steps are taken. So on a daily basis, as you know, the sample number started from about 1 to 6 and 8. So from the beginning, there's been few numbers. In the past three weeks in particular, with the increase in the contact tracing, we have been in the thousands. And uh, on a daily basis, um, I think we've been looking at about 5,000 um, in the past um, few days. After going through the rudiments of testing for COVID-19, I want to have a conversation with the medical director here and find out what is the next move for this facility post-COVID-19. We believe that our health systems are robust, that they are, they are strong, but they still can be stretched. So post-COVID, we have to look back at our health systems and especially look at how to strengthen the health systems with real planning on paper planning that is translated into action in terms of how are we really integrating research and health systems planning health system service delivery you know all those things it's become clear now that much as much as even big nations and strong nations are looking for resources to build, build strong armies it's not just only a strong army you need a strong health system so that your very survival is guaranteed otherwise you may be beaten by a small fly when the big bombs are there post covid we have to remember that imagine and reimagined diseases are a reality. COVID is not the last one. 
if I say that I'm not being a prophet of doom, I'm just telling the reality. So we have to prepare ourselves for the future, you know, global public health threats. The testing of COVID-19 cases has been simplified for you. This center, according to authorities, could do up to 6,000 samples a day. But what they need more is um, funding. So they are calling for the passing of the research fund bill so that they'll be able to do more post-COVID-19.